Hello everybody, my name is Ethan, welcome back to Let's Play Caesarian. So, I'm hoping to actually finish the game. Uh, not within this episode, but within this recording session. Like, we, we have to be close. Um, our Secretary of the Interior? Yeah, she's going to primary us for leadership of the party, which is shitty, I would say. It was an unusual day for the resident of Haas Lord. Regularly used streets and avenues were blocked off by military personnel. Many shops and cafes were closed, and once crowded streets were now empty. Instead, thousands of residents of Hostler were con concentrated in one street in Victory Avenue. Searching out through the heart of Hostler, people on both sides of the road were waving their swordish flags proudly for the military parade. I was getting prepared to embark on my trip. It was going to be a short drive down to Victory Avenue until we reached the Maroon Palace. My, uh, my company for this trip was Yosef and Sergey, as usual, driving the presidential car. Joseph approached me. He was wearing his decorative ceremony outfit. He was carrying a sword with a goat head on the handle and his pistol by his hip. He put on his cap. Mr. President, we are almost ready. We'll depart right after the tank column. Good. Joseph nodded. After hearing the loud thump of a book falling down on the floor, he turned to a couple of privates that were doing the preparations on schedule and started walking in her direction. Private, can't you do your job properly? I watched a young soldier perform a lousy salute to Joseph. What is that salute, soldier? Watch! This is a real salute! He formed an excellent salute after scolding the privates, he walked back. You know, strict as ever. Old habits die hard. Sergei appeared from the entrance and joined us. Mr. President, Mr. Lancier. Sergei performed a salute to Yosef, which made Yosef smile under his mustache. At ease, Mr. Wolkner. Are you ready to part yet? Yes, sir. Follow me, please. Uh, we started following Sergei through the corridors. Mr. President, have you seen the tanks? Our planes, too. Rumberg will be so scared when they see this. I sure hope so. I am sure, Mr. President. My kids are very excited to wake up today, you know, to see the planes fly. Sergey, where did you do your military service? Morna, 7th Artillery Squadron. I still talk with many of my friends from those days. Camaraderie of military is never forgotten. I still talk to many from my days as well. What about you, sir? All over Sorland, you know. Mr. President was under my command once. Gumran Outpost. He turned to me. Do you remember those days? Who could forget about Major Lancia? We called him the Relentless. He also let out a long laugh. Good old days. I also remember Mr. President did not like to execute direct orders from his superiors. It's, a, it's in the past now, true. We are here, sir. We exited the building and walked over to the clearance where the Black uh, Kalida, the President of the car, was waiting. It was decorated properly for the event, and the top canopy was removed so that it could stand and wave to the people. That seems like a problem. That seems really bad. On the way to the car... Uh, generals and admirals were lined up on both sides of the carpet. The atmosphere immediately changed when these experienced men who fought many years of the country saluted me. I salute back in respect. I salute the high-ranking military staff and attaches to the CSP. We took uh, hands before proceeding. I entered the car and Sergei started the engine. Yosa saluted me and we were on our way shortly. I hope I don't get shot in the head. That's all I want from this parade is not to get shot in the head. Good luck, Mr. President. The car started rolling. Even though there were many walls and trees uh, in between the car and the crowd, I was able to hear the deafening sound of cheering sword of citizens. Gradually, we made our way to the starting point. A couple of old propeller planes flew across our heads, and I thought whether their planes were older than me. Loud footsteps of marching soldiers were followed by loud noises coming from tank engines. Tanks came into my view. They are not the most modern models, however, they displayed their military might. I couldn't even finish my thought, and one of the tanks broke down and had to be towed. We waited for a few minutes for an announcement. Finally, it was our turn. On both sides of Victory Avenue, there was numerous citizens cheering my name and waving their swordish flags. I waved to the people. Uh, looking at the benches where the general staff was sitting at, I saw Tarkin Soul sitting next to General Valken. From the distance, it was hard to tell, but he tipped his hat off to me, and I could swear that he was smiling. We kept our slow and steady pace. We were almost at the archer set... Uh, at the Arbor S. Whiskey statue several hundred meters away. A group of soldiers saluted me as we passed by. They looked proud and stout in the new infantry uniforms with brand new rifles. We continued on per as per our schedule and finally arrived at the Maroon Palace, which was marked the end of the parade. People of Hossword had dispersed to their homes. A clear message was sent to Vroomberg by display of our military might. We were about to see whether it'd be enough or not. Okay. I will say. I didn't get shot. Oh, and this is actually the end of the chapter. Fantastic. Um, not getting murdered generally is good. Maybe maybe that's a controversial take. I'm not too sure. 
I'm just glad I didn't get shot in the head with like a sniper rifle at some point. Okay, we just got some news from Geopolitico. World leaders to gather at Alliance of Nations. Uh, anything else other than just you? I don't believe so. The Alliance of Nations, Sorlin 1, flight to Kroot. I, David Whiskey, and the rest of the Sorlin's delegation to the Alliance of Nations arrived in Kroot. The local police escorted us to the Alliance headquarters in downtown Constantium. Immediately recognized Bolt by its gleaming dome. On entering the building, we were met by a parliamentary guide uh, who briefed us about the procedures. At our strict security screening, the staff ushered us to the third floor. We went to the massive circular assembly hall and took our designating seats. David sat next to me. The President of the General Assembly, Mr. Uh, Mr. Nines, opened a session with a short speech and, and called the first speaker to the floor. It is my great pleasure to invite the Prime Minister of Lesbia to address the assembly. Patricio Ali, uh, Alvarez stood and walked to the podium as the assembly applauded. Mr. President, it is my pleasure to return to this podium. They leaned in and spoke in a low voice. Let's see how crazy this year's session will get. I'm surprised he isn't drunk. David chuckled. When I last spoke here, the message I gave was encouragement and support to this organization and the vital role it plays. Of all the challenges Eastern Maricopa and the whole world has faced since then, one has grown larger and more immediate than any other. The threat of the so-called socialist states and the actions taken by the authoritarian rulers with no regard to international law. A loud noise came from the table of Oxlon. I saw Ermac Heigl pound his fist on the table in protest. Kept watching today. Uh, the need to come together as leaders of the free world is more important than ever. The CSP, under the leadership of United Katana, has been fueling Vogtland's military industrial complex and its expansionist aims in Eastern Makopa. The world turned a blind eye when the armies of Vogtland occupied Hegeland, and they can't and they did not stop there. According to our intelligence reports, United Katana made nuclear missiles uh, were ready were quickly deployed to the island. He pulled out a photograph, even though it was hard to see from my position, I recognized it was an aerial image of Hajiland. We demanded that the Chancellor speak the truth. As you can see, we have evidence of the construction of silos. I kept listening. No Eastern Mercopa nation has, uh, can accept the installation of weapons of mass destruction on the island in the Mercian Sea. Emre Kaigo stood up and kept pounding his fist. We hereby call for the immediate dismantling and withdrawal of all missiles and other offensive weapons from Hajiland. We invite all the member states to support our call to the resolution in accordance to Article 11 of the Falkiel Treaty. A lot of noise came from the Assembly Hall in response. Most of the Western Mercopa de uh, delegates were clapping, while others either shouted in protest or stayed in stony silence. Let us not forget about the recent events that transpired in another state with the socialist teachings. Uh, the state that wages war against its own citizens, Wayland. That's a bunch of horseshit. Wayland's not even socialist. Strictly speaking, Small X Party is called the Wayland Nationalist Party of Nourish Socialism. Their, their purge of the minorities in the country was against... Well, okay. The purge of the, the minorities in the country was again largely ignored by the international community. I would even go as far as to call it a genocide. Wayland violated our past treaties and mobilized their armed forces, deploying them close to our borders and authorized them to partake in massacres. Lesbia was affected not only by a large wave of refugees coming from Wayland, but by subsequent government seizures of all our companies that were active in the country. We hereby call the members of the state to action against Wayland and its rogue government. Thank you. I did not react to his speech. He walked back to his seat amidst enthusiastic applause from most of the Mercian delegates. President Nines uh, waited for the noise to calm down and invited the next president, our next speaker, the president of Wayland, Victor Smolak. Smolak stood up as he walked past Pratito Alvarez. He brushed him aside with an exa exaggerated sweep of his arms. When he reached the podium, he fumbled with the microphone for a few seconds. Then he smiled over Alvarez mockingly as he raised the, the height of it. Look at all the theatrics. Yeah, that's him. Victor turned to President Nines and bowed slightly. Mr. President. He then turned back to us and stared out into the hall for a few seconds. Fellow delegates, it is true that the world today faces a multitude of challenges. In the midst of these challenges, the world's most powerful leaders gather here and recruit. And what do they do? They make threats, promote hate, and spread lies. Is this the Alliance of Nations we all want? Where's the cooperation and friendship? Where's the unity? I want to remind you of the wars that the West fought uh, on our soil of all the foreign troops who occupied our country and seized our valuable resources. I want to remind you how they stole out the oil from our sacred soil and that they do not know when to stop. The ATL soldiers left, but their uh, interference never ceased. They financed armed rebellion groups whose only purpose is to create terror inside our country. 
The fellow delegates, don't you dare speak about Wayland before you acknowledge your own involvement in our civil war, before you acknowledge your own dark past. As it is well known, after the tremendous tragedy of Wayland civil war, Arcasia made a deal with United Katana, where they agreed upon the withdrawal of their troops along with the removal of half our army. And not only did that weaken us, we were left alone facing the genocidal Bluish Freedom Front, which the ATO funds together with Rumberg. Just like the delegate for me, I will show you some of the evidence of foreign interference. He picked a large stack of papers and waved them back and forth. I have clear evidence of direct aid from Rumberg to the Bluish Freedom Front. They smuggled in tons of KA 74s in the Wayland. They smuggled in their spies, smuggled in mercenary commanders. I mean, he's got balls taking on Rubric in the West like that. David nodded in agreement. Uh, these documents will be published everywhere. Copies have already been sent to the Investigation Affairs of the Alliance of Nations. I expect this organization to do its task and investigate this properly instead of leaving Wayland behind as they've always done. Coming back to the claims of the lesbian representative, first, there's no evidence of civilian massacres by Wayland forces, nor so called purges of minorities. Second, the operation was limited only to the militant BFF, not to the Bloods in general. Third, we know your government is also implicit in the funding of the BFF, and that your oil companies aided their militants during the operation. Fourth, as a state, we only took what was ours. The companies that the delegates spoke of were not only aiding militants, they were brought to Wayland by force. Know that Wayland will no longer recognize the right of any other country to determine what type of weapons are permitted to possess, or what type of policies we follow within our borders. Wayland stands stronger and more united than ever, our people have spoken, and the enemies inside our borders are crushed. Now. I ask every delegate here to read our report on the connections of the West and the armed militants in Eastern Rakopa, and I ask the Alliance of Nations to do what's right. Wayland only wants peace, our people want peace, they are counting on our support and understanding of all the nations in the world. The proclamation is free Wayland or death. The assembly roared with, uh, with particularly loud applause coming from the seats of the Rikon nations. He doesn't seem popular with Rika, doesn't he? Well, he played the victim here pretty strongly, and his anti-imperialist stance has definitely earned him sympathy from Rickons. Most of that continent is still not uh, achieved st stability after gaining their independence from their colonial caesareans. Uh, it's easy to forget, it's only been a few years since revolutions. Victor slowly walked back to his seat as he applauded himself. He saluted the Rickon delegates as he passed by. The next president in nine invited Martin Van Horten to the podium. Uh, he walked into the microphone with quick step. He was frowning and clenching his fist. I can almost see his jaw trembling. Oh, he looks pissed. Can you blame him? Vogslan just occupied Hajiland. Uh, Mr. President, fellow delegates of the Assembly, and friends, it's an honor to be here with you today. I wish we could meet under different circumstances. Once again, the CSP nations, and in particular Vajland, has shown us they are willing to do to achieve their political aims. I must sadly say that the world has left us alone. We were one of the first countries to properly cooperate within, uh, to propose proper cooperation between Middle Eastern European nations. Yet, when we were threatened by Vagdan expansionism, nobody came to our side. Although Mr. Alevius voiced his indirect support for us earlier in today's speech, I can't keep myself from wondering where he was when our lands were under invasion by the very socialist he speaks about. So here I am, asking for the support of fellow member states of the Alliance of Nations, Agnolia is under attack by Vagdan. A loud banging noise emerged from the table of the Vagdan delegates. All of them were pounding their fists on the table. Mr. President, please moderate the assembly. This is more than disrespectful. Irma Tego began shouting curses at nines, repeatedly banged his gavel for order. After a minute of back and forth shouting, uh, the noise settled and nines allowed Martin to continue. As you all know, Agiland, which had been a territory of Agnolia for more than three decades, was invaded by Vagland in a sudden attack. Not only did they unlawfully occupy our lands, they brought nuclear missiles to the island the moment our forces retreated. In the midst of all this conflict, Sorland gave United Katana docking rights uh, in their largest naval base. That base currently holds the entire fleet. Holds an entire fleet from Katana. With the access given to them by Sorland, United Katana Vogsland United Force is now roaming the seas. Malianist terror surrounds us on all sides. We must not falter. I invite all member states to find a resolution in accordance with Article 11 of the Falco Treaty, enforcing the immediate dismantling of all missiles from Hajiland. I must also remind you that under Article 3 of the Ventrian City Treaty, the Alliance of Nations must ensure the withdrawal of the occupying forces from the island. I call for the democratic world to action against the tyranny of malinism, authoritarianism, militarism, and extremism. The begging noise started again. Hegel stood up and approached uh, the restaurant. You're a spineless jerk. You lack the Arcasian 
You lackey of accusing imperialism. President Nye's called for silence and started hitting the gavel. Look at the old man go. All of your complaints against us are your direct results of your capitalist and neo-colonialist systems. President Nye's, please. What is this? President Nye smacked the gavel in a vein as a shouting match broke out in the assembly. Finally, after a few minutes, the other Vaxalian delegates convinced Hegel to sit back down. I believe I don't need to speak more about the subject. Everything is clear as day. Visitor Hegel's actions speak volumes with the reality of Vaxland and their corrupted ideology. As soon as this conflict resolves with the help of the Alliance of Nations soon. He quickly left the podium and nodded to the other Iconolian delegates. The two left the Assembly Hall. President Nines announced the next speaker, Emmerich Hegel. Hegel immediately took his place and spoke in a low, seething tone. Thank you. David, buckle up. It's the Chancellor's turn now. It looks like you're having fun, Mr. President. I mean, a little bit. A little bit. A little bit. First of all, I would like to extend a warm uh, do welcome to the new states from Rika that have joined this organization. After fighting for years against colonialism and imperialism, they have more than earned our membership vote. I am overjoyed to see them finally represented in this assembly. As our numbers grow and more states represented in this stage, we come ever closer to finding resolutions to the conflicts that plague us. For hundreds of years, the dominant economies of Mercopa raised, pillaged, and exploited the continents of Rika and Xena. Sadly, Vagslav was also part of this plunder in the years before the revolution, when it, st when it still clung to the idea of imperialism. But when our masses found their voice, the old colonial powers and our new financiers turned against them. These powers did whatever they could to hamper our revolutions. They did not want the people to be heard. They are scared of us for showing the possibility of a better path. Of course, they do not want us to succeed. They threaten the productivity that runs in the blood and sweat of their working class. And now they have started labeling us as the aggressors, yet... We all know that it was the Arcasians who built up the military bases around Rakopa, and it was the ATO that first formed the fight against Malianivism. Hejel was, is, and will be Vaxlani in territory. Our intervention on the island is completely justified. Mr. Delegates brought up the Falakil and Virtuous City Treaties. However, they are forgetting about the Treaty of Constrium. Vaxlan exercised his right to intervene on behalf of our people who were being oppressed and massacred by the Agnolian government just because they did not recognize an appointed governor. They did not get to elect one. We acted in full accordance to the second article of the treaty. If there is a society to be blamed, it is the state which murders its minorities for, pl for publicity, showing support for our nation. There are also claims about illegal missiles. No country in the world has the right to determine what type of weapons we import. If there is a conflict the alliance can resolve, let's hope the Arcasian base Let's start with the Arcasian base on Falakio Island. Lesbia has been housing Arcasian troops and missiles by our border for years, and none of the member states even talked about it. I also want the member states to look into the Arcasian base in Lesbia, and if the Alliance of Nations truly claims to have the people's best interests at heart, they cannot stay silent about what the Agnolian government did in Hajiland, how they took away the rights of our people. Perhaps then, there can be a proper dialogue between our nations, and the Alliance of Nations can finally demonstrate that it can serve its intended purposes. But unfortunately, the Alliance of Nations remains all too willing to overlook such human rights violations. However, the Vaxlani government is ready, to, is ready, as always, to fight the forces of oppression and colonial servitude on behalf of the free people everywhere. Before I leave this stage, I would like to extend a due welcome to Sorland, our newest entrant into the CSP. Another great nation now stands together with us. He raises his left fist. And Rotran Viscor. Was that Swordish? Did I catch that right? He said the resolution will come. Yes, but it's old Vaglish. Very similar to Swordish, right? Some words are even written the same way. But I'm surprised you caught that from his accent. Most of the applause, most of uh, most of the delegates from Xena, Rika, and Katana responded with a tremendous applause. Ego shook hands with them as he walked back to his seat. President Nines announced the next speaker, Queen Beatrice Livingston. Dear President of the Assembly, dear delegates, dear leaders of the world, just as my fellow Eastern Mercopan delegates spoke about the troubles plaguing our nation, or plaguing our continent, I will also bring attention to the plight of the people of the North. The Alliance of Nations, the ATO and CSP, and even the OMEC. I think there's maybe like the EU? Have never supported our people when they've been through tragic atrocities. Unlike many of the Western countries have, Unlike many of the Western countries here, we never received financial aid when natural disasters struck our lands. The pain of our people was never recognized, not even when they faced a threat of genocide at the hands of Swordish kings. In light of it all, I implore this alliance to take a closer look at the actions of our southern neighbors. They took in traitors and gave them protection. The president himself gained a power amid murder and unrest, yet people from his administration had the guts to blame our government for inciting violence. And they expect the world to believe their lies. 
can't let her speak about us like that. Let, for, let's first hear her out. Sorlin even aided the illegal occupation of Hajiland by Vogsland. They are increasing their military presence rapidly to further their dark aims. I hereby invite all of you to determine the initiation of a proper intergovernmental investigation at Sorland. If the Alliance continues to, sh uh, to shirk its given duties, you can trust in Runeberg to take matters into their own hands. It is important to point out that Runeberg will not send Eilie by if Morgatan and military are transferred to Eastern Markopa. I hereby condemn both the CSP and Sorland for allowing United Katana to settle in our region. And before I finish, I just want to say, Mr. Smolak, I am looking forward to reading your report. I wonder what the so-called evidence is all about. Know that your slander does not work on us. Know that we are ready to die for our freedom. Know that our kingdom stands firm and strong. Expect a grand awakening. Thank you. Grand awakening. Yeah, no, no, that's definitely a threat. There's no doubt about that. She left the restaurant without giving much applause. Without getting much applause. Then President Nye spoke my name. Oh, shit. Mr. Anton Rain, President Sorlin, I invite you to address the assembly. David immediately started applauding. Good luck, Mr. President. I walked into the restroom and took my place at the podium. In front of me were some of the most powerful leaders in the entire world. I looked them in the eye. Uh, it's an honor to be here. Um... Sorlin remains committed to the Alliance of Nations and the ideals that gave birth to it. We must remain devout to our dream of a peaceful and free world, a united world. Our people are still not free from fear, not free from poverty and starvation. Today, we're confronted by a difficult choice. Our great achievements may either be used to the benefit or the detriment of mankind. Now, I'd like to address some of the topics mentioned here today. Uh, we're deeply saddened by the tragic events that took place in Wayland. But we'll continue our cooperation with Wayland. And I would like to address the Queen of Rumberg. Sorlin has always wanted to have peace between our nations, yet we are being threatened by Rumberg. We wanted to be diplomatic even when Rumberg shot down our plane. If Rumbra continues the aggression, Sorlin will be ready. And now I like to bring my speech to a close. We stand and always will stand for the rights of the people of Sorlin and Eastern Mercopa, just as those in the other continents. Long live the Alliance of Nations, long live peace and unity. Peace in Mercopa, peace in the world. There was some applause from the assembly. Thank you. I left the podium. So it got a middling response. Eh. I, I think it was not a great speech. President Nines announced the next speaker, Dwight Walker. It's going to be a long episode because I think it's going to go through everybody. Mr. President, I want to first congratulate you on your election to this high office. Mr. Secretary, Delegates of the United Nations, ladies and gentlemen, fellow friends. We meet again on our quest to bring peace and light to this world, but even though some of the clouds were lifted, the world has not yet escaped the darkness. The Katana Security Pact is rapidly expanding its influence now that fellow Mercopan nation Sorlin is standing with United Katana and its Malianist ideology. It's very troubling to see a democratic nation of Mercopa be invaded by those Malianist powers. 
I of course refer, I refer of course to Hajjad's occupation by Vagsland. This is essentially against the lasting peace of the world has enjoyed since the century of evolutions. Today our peacekeeping obligation are being tested by United Katana and the Malianist bloc. If we fail, the counter has stopped this threat. If we stay idle and allow them to build new walls of weapons of hostility, if the attackers do not face any consequences, then this unstable peace will, we believe will, uh, we had built will be with the world's downfall. The prosperity we will point its fingers at us for not stopping it. Remember how got another Vagalan delegate started making noise again. This time, how got taken off his shoe and was banging the table with it. I pound my, start pounding my fist on the table. Despite the noise we all made, President Walker continued his speech without a pause. Despite his claims, the CSP's actions will only bring about war. We believe the United Katana and Arcasia, together with their allies, could come to an understanding for our mutual benefit and our desire to avoid destruction of the world. Yet yeah, United Katana keeps acting in complete disregard to international law. Their allies are forcibly taking land and imposing their values on the people of those lands. I will say this about the leaders of United Katana. If either of us is to be secure, we need peaceful cooperation, not nuclear missiles, shows of naval superiority, or invasions. The leader of United Katana fails to demilitarize Hajiland with complete dismantling of nuclear missiles and withdrawal of occupying Vaslan forces. The ATO will have to take matters into its own hand. Hegel stood up with a shoe in his hand. What is this supposed to mean? You're promoting war in the alliance of nations? Mr. President, this cannot. Knight slammed his gavel down and shouted, Silence, please. Mr. Chancellor, please let me finish. We did not interrupt you when you addressed the assembly. Finally, I propose that the Alliance of Nations undertake a noble cause of helping the people of the world through rewriting and properly enforcing the, its human rights declaration. The Alliance of Nations cannot survive as a static organization. Its size and duties are increasingly enormous. It should adapt to the changing world. But peace and the rights do not rest in the hands of the organization alone. They rely on the hearts of our people and the spirit of cooperation between our nations. So let it be known, my fellow inhabitants of this world, let us take our stand and see what we can finally achieve a lasting peace. Thank you. Both the assembly applauded his speech, the ATO delegates in particular. And that speech has very dangerous connotations to it. Yes. I hope we won't be seeing a direct war between superpowers anytime soon. That would be the destruction of the planet. The applause continued for some time. Walker shook hands with very delegates on his way back to his seat. President Knight announced the last speaker for the break. It was Leon Malinev. Malinev wa uh, slowly walked to the resident in his iconic suit. All the CSP delegates stood up and applauded him. Honorable Chairman and fellow delegates of the Alliance of Nations, here we are again at the most esteemed meeting of the state representatives in the world. However, increasingly, we are being threatened, disregarded, attacked, or ignored in this assembly. The representative of Arcasia has shown his unfriendly attitude towards us yet again. Arcasia would have you believe that we are standing in a way of lasting peace, yet the peace that they talk about is only possible thanks to our missiles and our growing base in a developing world. The ATO kept waging wars against people's revolutions and forcing new independent states to be their puppets, binding them themselves to the Arcasian Lyra. And now, yet again, another Arcasian president is telling us that we are the aggressors and that they are the keepers of peace. We will not be silent anymore against these lies. When uh, was this peace you talked about? Where was the cooperation between our countries? Have you ever accepted our invitation to talk about denuclearization? If you don't like us, don't accept our deals, don't listen to our concerns, and keep pointing fingers at us, why did you invite us to the Alliance of Nations? Every year, United Katana comes to this assembly to address the real problems of real people, people who suffer because of your systems, your wars, and your ignorance. Whether you like it or not, we will keep representing the laborers, the slaves, the oppressors of the world, and believe it or, and believe it or disregard it, history is on our side. We say to the representatives of capitalist countries, come and visit us, come and see the revolution working in Katana, show our continent uh, to your people without distorting the reality. If you cannot do that, then you need not come. We believe socialism will triumph over capitalism in the end, such as the logical conclusion of the development of humankind. This time, lesbian delegates started laughing very loudly. Some other delegates booed. I kept watching. You can keep laughing, gentlemen. Communism will bury you. Suddenly, the laughing turned into shouting. If you really believe in cooperation, you will be waiting. Oh, no, we will be waiting. We're not going anywhere. However, if the ATO keeps intervening in our matters, it is natural that the CSB would react. Before we move on, we'd also like to extend a warning to Roomberg. United Katana CSP will stand against the aggression of Roomberg. They are playing a dangerous game, one that may bring uh, ruin to Mercopa and their own lands. I hope the United Alliance of Nations can find a resolution to this conflict. If not, let it be known that United Katana will do whatever it takes to uh, protect the people of Swordland and Eastern Mercopia. You think Roomberg can pursue any more aggression after that statement? I doubt that. 
With our membership in CP, uh, CSP and Cortana's clear support, the Queen needs to be would need to be crazy to try anything. Despite threats from the ATO, Rubenberg and other uh, nations or or any other nation or organization, we must not succumb to further division and violence. We must ask ourselves, what do the people of our countries expect from us? They surely don't want war or bloodshed. Uh, so let us leave to our children and grandchildren good memories of our time and a better future for all. Let them look at history and say once there was a great division of complex problems, but the leaders of the world came together in the Alliance of Nations and succeeded in settling them in order to ensure our peaceful lives. Let us act in such a way to make this session make this session not a session of threats, but a session of hopes and a realization of them. The government of United Katana and the United Peoples of the Kat and the United Peoples of Katana are ready to serve their duties for world peace. Long live the People's Revolution. I'll applaud his speech. The assembly broke into massive applause. The applause continued for some time. Malinev slowly walked back to his seat as the president announced, uh, announced a break. That was a lot. It was troubling. Tensions are too high. It's quite scary to be honest. We need to be careful. We walked out the hall and had some lunch and fresh air. Okay, so that 30 minutes, it was just that one event. But I think it's going to be a good time then for us to end this episode. So thank you to everybody for watching. My name is Anthony. If you enjoyed, put a thumbs up. Uh, if you didn't, let me just restart that. If you've enjoyed, put a thumbs up. Now, Joey, throw some down. If you want to see more, subscribe and goodbye.